Welcome to our review on heating and insulating buildings. So the first thing we're going to consider is what actually heating buildings entails. Now, when we actually come to heat our homes, then there's a variety of ways we could do this. So most houses probably have a gas central heating system. Some of you may have actual solid wood fires, so log fires, for example, and others may have electric heating systems. But what they all have in common is that when it comes to heating your home, it can be a very expensive thing to do. So because of that, what we need to do is take steps to reduce the rate at which the energy is transferred from inside our house to outside. One of the key ways that we then reduce energy transfer is through using a range of insulation techniques. So the first one is also one of the most cost effective ways, which is loft insulation. And quite often this is a fiberglass material, which you can see in the picture there. And the way this works is that air is actually trapped between the fibers and that reduces the rate of energy transfer by conduction. If we've got a greater number of layers of insulation or the thicker the insulation is, then that's going to reduce the rate of energy transfer to a greater extent. The second kind of insulation is cavity wall insulation. Now, a lot of modern houses have cavity walls. So this is where you have an inner wall and an outer wall with a gap between it. And normally that gap is filled with some kind of insulation. The whole idea behind that is to reduce the rate of energy transfer through the outer walls of the house. And the way this works is that the insulation between those two walls is going to trap the air in pockets and again reduce that energy transfer by conduction. Another technique we can employ is using radiator reflectors. Now these have got various types so some are just kind of rolls of silvery material and others are actual metal sheets that you put behind. But the idea is that you put them behind the radiator and it will reflect radiation away from the wall and back into the room. So it reduces the rate of energy transfer by radiation in this case. The next method is double glazing. The way double glazing actually works is you've got two panes of glass, as you can see on the right, with dry air or a vacuum between them. So what we actually find here is that if we use thicker glass, then we would actually find it would have a slower rate of energy transfer by conduction. Same would apply if we used a lower thermal conductivity in our glass. If we've got the vacuum between them, then we're also preventing energy transfer by convection. The next technique isn't really something we can add after the house has been built. So don't go and suggest to your parents that you need to add another layer of bricks around the outside of your house because it's just not realistic. But the thickness of the wall is actually going to affect the rate of transfer by conduction. So if we've got a thicker wall with more bricks, particularly if they've got a lower thermal conductivity, then we reduce the rate of transfer by conduction once more. The last technique is using solar panels. Now solar panels absorb the infrared radiation from the sun and we then use them in one of two ways. We either have solar cell panels which will generate electricity directly from the sun or solar heating panels which heat the water directly using that infrared radiation. In order to actually maximize the amount of infrared that they absorb, we usually fit them on a south facing roof because that means they then get more of the infrared from the sun. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can describe the different techniques we can use to reduce energy transfer and explain how they work. 